Yeah, and, and, and the interesting thing also is that uh, Donald Trump really, apparently, on according to several sources, was very upset that Pence did so well in the debate compared to him. You know, and he actually tweeted out late last night that, uh, you know, didn't, didn't... Uh, one of his late night tweets. One of his late night tweets. He said, yeah, didn't, didn't Mike do well? I'm getting a lot of credit for that. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? Are you that much of a narcissist mm. that you cannot even acknowledge the fact? And the question, though, is was he doing well for himself or was he trying to look beyond the selection? Because the, the consensus of the commentariat was that, uh, you know, Pence, in essence, won the 2020 Iowa caucus you know, four years from now because of the principal stand he tried to take. But you also have to wonder if his lying is going to catch up with him. So, so in the short term, it'll work. <laughs> well, it won't work in the short term, rather, with a presidential election by saying, you know, he never said that. But it might work down the line for his Iowa. Yeah, I mean, he, I mean, look at look at the way Trump has treated Pence. I mean, he's treated him like an employee, like you know, somebody in the Trump organization. He's shat all over him. He has not allowed him to, you know, open his mouth whenever he's in the room, and now. This was the first unfiltered, unmoderated by the Donald attempt because nobody covers the vice president, the vice presidential candidates out on the trail. You know, they don't get anything on the evening news or anything yeah. like that. So this was the first big moment. And the other problem, the ratings were the lowest since um, the days of uh, the lowest ever rated vice presidential debate since Cheney versus Lieberman. <laughs> it was a snooze fest. So as that. bad as it was, nobody <laughs> watched it. So we have the first debate with the two presidential candidates drawing the highest recorded audience ever for her. Yeah. And then we have this one drawing one of the lowest recorded. And you just begin to wonder what the hell's going on. Dario? <laughs> yeah. Because it's all about Trump. That's why. It's about his popularity. And I was... I was thinking about, you know, listening to various podcasts and, and sort of independent news people talking about it. And I, I've sort of come to a theoretical conclusion about why Trump is where he is. And for years, Dems and Republicans have been telling the electorate there's a social contract between us. You know, if you follow what we're saying, then things will be better for everyone. Now, there's different, you know, the Republicans and the Democrats have different versions of that. You know, one is more kind of collective responsibility versus um, following the American dream and working hard. But the upshot for both of those ideologies, let's say, is everyone has a stake. And if you work hard and do well, then the whole country will will um, rise up and be good together. Right. But Trump is not saying that Trump is saying there are winners and losers. Right. I'm a winner. I'm going to tell you who the losers are. And what do you want to be? And now for an electorate that is hurting in many different demographics, that is a very simple and powerful argument. Yeah, that's truthful. There are bloody losers. I don't want to be one of the losers and I'm going to vote.